In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about capacitors. Its introduction. Principle of energy storage in a capacitor. Types of capacitors such as dielectric capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, ceramic capacitor and film capacitor. And then we will study the charging and discharging of a capacitor. Let's start with the introduction. Just like a resistor and an inductor, a capacitor is a passive component which is widely used in many electronic circuits like filters, DRAMs, energy storage, motor starters, tuning circuits, etc. The best example of the use of a capacitor is the ceiling fan. If we remove its lower cap, we see a big white cylinder, which is nothing but a capacitor. Primary function of a capacitor is to store the energy in the form of an electric field. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let's study how a capacitor stores energy. A capacitor is constructed by keeping two conductors of the same material parallel to each other. When a voltage is applied, the plates attain a positive and a negative charge. When a capacitor is charged, the negative charge is removed from one side of the capacitor and is placed onto the other, leaving one side with a positive charge plus Q and the other with a negative charge minus Q. The net charge of the capacitor as a whole remains equal to zero. Even if we remove the battery, the capacitor still holds the energy for some time. These different charges create the potential difference delta V between two plates. The amount of charge Q stored in a capacitor is linearly proportional to the potential difference between the plates. Thus we may write Q equals C into delta V, where C is a positive proportionality constant called as capacitance. The unit of this capacitance is Farad given as capital F. Let's see the different types of capacitors. Four types of capacitors are very commonly used. Dielectric capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, ceramic capacitor and film capacitor. The first type of capacitor is the dielectric capacitor. A dielectric capacitor consists of two metal plates placed in parallel with each other. A layer of the dielectric material is developed between the two metal plates. The connecting terminals or wires are taken out from each metal terminal. Dielectric is a substance or body having very low electric conductivity. Let's assume that a normal capacitor has a charge of plus 4 and minus 4 on each plate. After introducing the dielectric medium between the two plates, the charge remains constant, but the electric energy reduces by factor K or kappa. This kappa is called as a dielectric constant. So if the energy stored by the normal capacitor is E0, then the energy stored by the dielectric capacitor becomes E nu equal to E0 by K. The voltage across the capacitor V is equal to energy into distance between plates. Thus V0 equals E0 into D. And V nu equals E nu into D. We substitute the value of E nu in terms of E0 here. Thus V nu equals V0 upon K. We know that the capacitance is given by C equals to Q by V. Thus C0 equals Q by V0 and C nu equals Q by V nu. After substituting the values, we find the dielectric capacitance is K times the normal capacitance. Thus introduction of dielectric increases the capacitance. The capacitance of a dielectric capacitor is calculated by a direct formula. C equals epsilon A by D where A is the area of plates, D is the distance between two plates and epsilon is the dielectric constant. The next type of capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor. It is a capacitor that uses an ionic conducting liquid, electrolyte, 
as one of its plates. Here, a semi-liquid electrolyte solution in the form of a jelly or paste is used. The dielectric is a very thin layer of oxide which is grown electrochemically in production with the thickness of the film being less than 10 microns. The entire structure is coated with aluminium and two terminals are taken out for connections. Electrolytic capacitors are polar. That is, they have their own polarities as plus and minus. The minus terminal is denoted by a black strip as shown. Thus, while making connections with the DC source, care must be taken about the polarities of an electrolytic capacitor. The next capacitor is the ceramic capacitor. A ceramic capacitor is a fixed value capacitor with the ceramic material acting as the dielectric. It is constructed by two or more alternating layers of ceramic and a metal layer acting as the electrode. Ceramic capacitors have a high dielectric constant and are available so that relatively high capacitances can be obtained in a smaller physical size. Ceramic type of capacitors generally have a three digit code printed on their body to identify their capacitance value in picofarads. Generally, the first two digits indicate the capacitor's value and the third digit indicates the multiplier or the number of zeros to be added. So if we have a capacitor with number 154 printed on it, its value becomes 15 into 10 raised to 4 picofarads equal to 150 nanofarads. The last type of capacitor that we will study is film capacitors. Film capacitors which use polystyrene, polycarbonate or teflon as their dielectrics are sometimes called plastic capacitors. Examples of film capacitors are the rectangular metallized film or radial lead type capacitor and cylindrical film or actual lead capacitor as shown. Now let's study the most important phenomenon, charging and discharging of a capacitor. We divide this concept into two parts, when applied voltage is DC and when applied voltage is AC. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. First, we apply the DC voltage across a capacitor. Consider a circuit in which the capacitor is connected across a DC supply and a bulb is connected but the branch is kept open. Initially, the voltage across the capacitor is zero with zero charge on both the plates. When a capacitor is connected to a DC supply, the charge gets developed on both the plates and the current flow starts. This charge gradually increases as the voltage across the capacitor goes on increasing. This phase is called as the charging phase of a capacitor. Once the voltage across the capacitor equals the applied voltage, the current flow stops and the capacitor reaches its peak value. Now, we disconnect the capacitor from position A and connect it to position B. As the capacitor holds the energy for some time, it supplies voltage to the bulb and the bulb starts glowing with maximum intensity. As the charge across the capacitor gradually decreases, the intensity of a bulb also decreases and after some time the bulb goes off. This period is called as discharging of a capacitor. Now let's apply AC voltage across the capacitor. We know that AC signal alternates in positive and negative halves. Let's name positive peaks of the signal as A1, A2 and so on and the negative peaks as B1, B2 and so on for our convenience. As we apply an AC voltage across the capacitor, the charging of a capacitor starts. Till point A1 it reaches its peak value and after point A1 the voltage decreases. The discharging of a capacitor starts. It discharges till point B1. After point B1 again the voltage increases till point A2. Thus the capacitor charges again and reaches its peak point till A2. After this again the discharging starts and the process continues. We all know that a capacitor blocks DC signals and passes only AC signals. Let's see why. We know the equation for the current flowing through a capacitor is I 
equals C into dVC by dT, where V is the applied voltage. For DC voltage applied, the voltage V remains constant and the differentiation of constant term is always zero. Thus, when DC voltage is applied, the current through the capacitor is always zero. But the AC voltage is given as V equals Vm sin omega t, where Vm is constant but sin omega t is a function of time. Thus, its differentiation never becomes zero. Hence, a capacitor always passes the AC signal. Hence, a capacitor always blocks DC and passes AC. Let's have a quick review of what we've learned in this chapter. A capacitor is a passive component which is widely used in many electronic circuits like filters, DRAMs, energy storage, motor starters, etc. The symbol of a capacitor is two parallel lines with connecting leads and its unit is farad. A capacitor always stores the energy in the form of an electric field and not the charge. The net charge across any capacitor is always zero. We also studied commonly used capacitors which are dielectric capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, ceramic capacitor and finally film capacitor. The last concept was charging and discharging of a capacitor. For DC supply, it charges till the capacitor voltage equals applied voltage and then it discharges by supplying the voltage to the bulb. For AC supply, the capacitor charges till the peak positive value and discharges till the peak negative value.